the series you're From about to view childhood, I presents have had an basic principles of catenatic geometry, geometry and its structure. application in many areas of human My interest in all things natural, from the geometry and architecture, a deeper understanding to the structure and growth of space, the unity of and to things. the catenatic mapping of the When I was six years old, my father took me to a huge hill in West Los Angeles, California, and presented to, to us a veritable forest of understanding the universe. I had never relationships between geometry like and natural structure maze that can be appreciated during everything and their delicacy. In this kinetic sculpture, for example, as well as in the naturally occurring phenomena. Good morning. Welcome to my laboratory. I'm Robert Williams. <laughs> This video is the beginning of a series of discussions and adventures, really, into areas that you're probably unaccustomed to being in. Uh, we're going to be discussing and showing pictures and videos of catenetic geometry and natural structure. By natural structure, I mean the organization of biological cells and systems, organization of atoms and crystals, and the organization of uh, large structures like galaxies and the cosmos. So what is catenetic geometry anyway? The word catenetic comes from the Greek and Latin roughly translated as catena or cadena it means linkage or chain. And so catenetic geometry is concerned with how events and entities in the universe relate to one another. A fundamental tenet of catenetic geometry is this. Between every two entities or events in the universe, there exists a common boundary that both connects and separates the entity's events. I call this boundary a platen. To make the concept of platen a little more clear, let's consider two ideal concepts from mathematics. The first is a circle, and the second is a sphere. Neither of them exist in nature, and when you look at them mathematically, you will see that a circle is in reality a polygon. It can be of any number of sides. And a sphere is in reality a polyhedron, and it can be any number of faces. For example, here is a sphere. This is what we call a great circle. It passes through the center of a sphere. A small circle, on the other hand, does not pass through the center of the sphere. It's perpendicular to the center. And it can be of any size on the sphere, where the great circle can only be of one size, and that is the so-called perimeter of the sphere itself. So the, the small circle can be anywhere on the surface of a sphere, like so, and of course any size. When you have a system you can look at this. We look at a platen. The platen boundary is this small circle, and it can only be a small circle. It can ra range from anywhere from what we might call a point, very small, small circle, or a larger one, like so. These two spheres now form a system, and they're in balance. If we consider pushing them together, the small circle will grow in size until it degenerates, what I call degenerate, and become a great circle, at which point this two-sphere system reduces and degenerates into one sphere. Let's take a break from this theory and take a look at some reality. Let's look at how soap bubbles 
go together. Here we see the addition of bubbles on a two-dimensional surface and the derived theoretical structural system based upon this geometry. Here is the beginning of some theoretical models of the structure system. These models started small and became increasingly larger until we did this one with two integrated hemispheres. And from this two-dimensional array, we move into the third dimension. And from these theoretical studies, a structural system was developed based on this three-dimensional packing of soap bubbles. These is, this is a small circle structural system, and this was a theoretical model of the possibilities of spatial organizations using the small circle geometry. We have an exceptionally beautiful day in the high Mojave Desert of Southern California. We're overlooking the desert basin at an elevation of about 4,500 feet. 25 years ago, I constructed a three-dome ferro-cement studio within this forest of juniper trees. From our earlier discussion of small circuits, we can see in this building the two small circuit platens that interconnect the three domes into one structure. But what I wish to show you here is more than simply domes connected by small circuits, but rather an example of the artistic extension of the fundamental platen concept presented earlier. Here you will see energetic ribbon extensions of the platens, artistically and functionally flowing in a manner that integrates the space comprising the three domes. Mm -hmm.